let us uh, give thanks to Dawson Big Eagle, to Anthony Tuttle, Anthony Yellowbank, and Kenny Provost. And I think In, uh, in the Lakota language, in the Dakota language, and we have Dakota members of the Dakota Nation here, we say Pilamaye, and we have Omaha uh, relatives here tonight, and, and uh, we say Weeblaho, and we have Winnebago's here in this group, and we say Pinagigi. Mm -hmm. We all have ways of saying thank you, and I say <coughs> thank you for those offerings for all of our guests who come to be among us you know, tonight. I want to share with you, by way of remarks, and for you who've come so far away that you uh, exist on native lands. You were here on what formerly and always will be native lands. I want, for those of you who've come from other places, I want to tell you a little bit about that. In Bellevue especially, in that area, that was Omaha, Omaha relatives resided there for thousands of years and I want to remind us all as Nebraskans and as guests here that it was the Omaha who first consecrated the ground on which we live and grow. It was the Omaha who first made covenants with Wakanda the creator of all things that in exchange for bountiful harvest in exchange for protection of the elements, in exchange for health among the people. They said, Creator, Wakanda, if you will do this for us, we will be good stewards of this Mother Earth. We'll cherish it. We will protect this Mother Earth. That is the covenant that we will make with you. Tonight, earlier, there was a service here uh, in this Catholic Church, those who sponsor and help to sponsor this effort. And I went, being from that religion also, and went and, uh, and, and went among them tonight and worshipped. And they too talked about covenants that were made 2,000 years ago. In all of our religions, wherever we come from, we talk about these covenants that were made that we do certain things in exchange for blessings upon our family, our extended family, the people, the nations, and all the living things in this world. We talk and we renew those covenants all the time. For some reason, our nation's leaders have thought that the covenants made by the Umaha people in Bellevue, that they are not important, that they mean very little. They've not allowed them to protect and be good stewards of Mother Earth, the promise that they had made to the Creator of all things. And I'm here to tell you a strong feeling that I have. I don't think that is good. And I don't think that bodes well for any of us because I think that Mauna Wakanda, Pukashila Wakanda, I think that the Creator of all things knows little about time knows little about deeds of land, knows little about the technology we speak of. I think Wakanda, uh, Mauna, I think Tunkashila, I think the Creator knows about heart and resolve and the goodness that we have in each and every one of us and the willingness that we have to protect all of Mauna's children and to understand that we must be good to one another, that we must take care of one another, and that we must be humble, and that we cannot in this country begin, uh, continue to be arrogant. I say this about our own nation, this United States of America. We're like a wayward child that needs to be taken behind the woodshed. <laughs> But nobody is going to do that. Nobody is able to do it. It remains that we as Americans take ourselves behind the woodshed. And there's nobody doing that with regard to what's going on at Strapcom than you. You are the ones who are going to have to take us as wayward children behind the woodshed and teach us about the goodness that we say we once knew 
about the things we said we once would do and the role we said we would play in this world. Perhaps it needs to be redefined and you can help us to do that. There's not enough goodness here. There's not enough goodness in this world. I want to share something with you. When I came over and decided I wanted to find something to talk about, what is a theme? What can I say that is going to be important to all of us? And it's really pretty simple. It's something that I say every day in any interaction that I have with people who are trying to get a voice, trying to empower themselves, trying to make things a little bit better in our families, extended family, in the nations. And I'll tell you what I think and what I say every day that all that we want to do is to live. It's what we do. That's all of us. That's what we do. We wake up in the morning and our first efforts are so that we can live. We want to live. We want our children to live and our grandchildren. We want to grow and flourish if we can. But we want to live. And I think that anything that stands in the way of that goodness and that ability to live, to grow and flourish, uh, as human beings, as Americans, we need to speak to it. We need to deal with it. Even if it makes us uncomfortable, even if it makes others uncomfortable, even if it causes others to come out of their comfort zone, somebody needs to talk of these things. Nobody has the heart except you. Nobody has the nerve except you. And I applaud you for that because somebody needs to do it.